To start lesson two, we're going to discuss hoops, bobbins, organizers, threading needles, showing an assortment of different options, hoping that one or two will be to your liking or you would like to do it. So first we're going to start with hoops. I have three different sizes here just to give you an example. Personally, I like to use the six, size six inch because I can get my fingers to the center. So as I'm working on my project, I can reach to the center. Normally, I don't use one this small, but for my example, I'm going to use this one. This one is, a, I think, an 8 inch, but see, it would fall and you have to have a lot of extra finagling with your hands and shoulders in order to use a hoop that's big. But if you prefer to use a big one, please feel free to go right ahead. For my demonstration, I'm going to use the little one. So I'll just go ahead and put the little one on. You want to put the inside hoop on the bottom of your work and the outside hoop on the top. And when you first start, a lot of it may or may not fit in your hoop because you're working in a corner. But in this case, it looks like it pretty much, it's just, I'm having some leftovers here, but that's okay. And you wanna make sure your fabric is taut because as you stitch, you do not want the um, fabric to be loose because then you'll make them tighter and then your whole project will start puckering. So we'll just do this for now and set this aside. So we've discussed our hoops. Now we're gonna prep our bobbins. The bobbins come in packages like this of cardboard ones. There's also packages of plastic ones. You can buy individual ones. It's entirely up to you. Uh, there is other ways you can do it. This is just the way I enjoy doing it. So I use, the, these come out into little pieces. You just break them apart. So what you would do is I usually put the symbol on one side and I put the color number on the other side. So when you get your floss, you'll notice there'll be a, a tail hanging out. The tail is what you want to pull because it's a, it's a pull skein. As long as you pull that tail and you can pull the whole thing out, you don't necessarily get what I just got here, but it can happen. Okay, I'm not going to pull it all out. But then you would set it on your bobbin and wind it. Very simple. And then after you get it completely wound, you'd put it in one of your notches and that'll hold your thread in place. So that, that's how you'd prep your bobbins if you decided to use bobbins now. Or you can use the little organizer they give with you. You would separate your colors. Like in this case, I'm saying I have two strands of green. So I separated the two strands of green. You fold them in half. You go from the top to the bottom. Pull it through and then bring the tail up through the loop. Now you're ready to go. I didn't get mine quite even. But the good thing about this is, say you need a piece, you just take one of the six strands and you can pull it out and the other will stay intact on your card. And then when you take out what you need from the piece that you've taken off, then you can just slide it back into the card. It doesn't have to be connected to the original group. You can just set it off to the side. That way you know it's the one you're using. So there's the one you'd be using. As you see, I've got my codes. Now these are not the colors in my project. It's just these are the codes where we're going to start actually doing a project to show you how it works. So that's the reason why I use these. Now another way to organize them is on a little cardboard, a uh, little wooden rack. I sell these at my store. But you would set your bobbins in the little slots. So no matter where you go, you've got your bobbins all neatly in your slots. And the slots are on a slight angle. You can have your husband make one for you so you can uh, not have to purchase one as long as he's got a spare piece of wood sitting around. But you put as many in as you want. I can get like 24, like 6 across times 4. Uh, if you make a bigger one, of course you can put more of them in. But this is one way to do your organizing. Another way to organize is in a, a plastic case. These are all the colors I have for the project I'm working on. And I organize them to where I put all the numbers together, I put all the arrows together, I put all the solid designs together, uh, odds and ends, whichever way I want to do it. And then in the back, I put my spare floss because I know I'm going to be getting low on these particular colors soon. 
So I went ahead and purchased them and set them in the back. So when I do need one that's low in color, like say this one's getting low, I know I need to purchase number 3822. So when it is completely or just about empty, I have the floss available. Another organizer you can use um, is like um, these were, this particular one, I'll move it up closer. They actually input the thread on a needle and they put the symbol here so that way you know which color it is. Now, I don't think this one are on a needle. These are the ones that they pre-threaded on a needle. If you only have, say, 10 or 12 colors, this works good. But if you got a 90 colors like I have, that's a lot of work to always keep your needle threaded. But it's entirely up to you which way you want to go. Okay, now we're going to talk about threading needles. Uh, to show you how to do it, I'm going to use this big fat needle because it's a lot easier to see with a piece of yarn. Uh, there's you know, many, many different ways. My, the way I like to do it, I don't even know what it's called, but it works out really great. You lay the yarn or thread over your needle and pull it tight. And you make sure there's just a little bit showing. Then you pull it off your needle, but don't lose the tension on your finger. Then you set your needle on top and kind of in a sawing motion and slowly releasing it. It's on your needle. So that's the way I like to do it, it's quick and easy. Or you can do a good old fashioned needle threader. You just insert your needle threader in the eye, put the yarn or thread through the wire, and then pull the wire through, and then it's threaded. Another way if you don't have a threader is a piece of paper. You make sure the paper is wide enough that it can go through the eye of your needle, fold it in half, Place the end of your thread in the piece of paper and then thread the paper through the eye. And there you go. That's three different ways to do it. Whichever way works best for you is entirely okay. Uh, if you have to knot your thread, you can do the one where you wrap it around your finger and roll it off and pull it and then it gives you a knot. Usually the knot is bigger. When you do it this way sometimes you need a big fat knot now if you want to use a smaller knot it's called a quilter's knot it takes a little bit of practice but it's super easy you lay the thread on your finger and the needle on top of the thread wrap the thread around the needle a couple of times and then slide it off keeping a hold of your thread and keep going and go and go 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 and when you get to the very bottom you have a tinier knot and sometimes a little knot is all you need so that's uh, two different ways to knot your thread. Okay, from there, okay, I've showed you the knot. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some of the different ways, the three different ways of starting your work. You can either start it with a loop on the end, which I do, or you can start with a knot on the end. Now, if you're doing two strands, it's really easy to do it with the loop on the end because you just fold your thread in half and thread it through your needle. If you've got three strands, it's kind of hard to fold in half because then you'd have six. If you do it the other way, you just have one thread and fold it in half. Now, I'm going to make a bigger knot because I'm using the 11 count, so I would make this regular sewer's knot. Like that, and then there's your knot. Otherwise, I would make the quilter's knot because it's smaller. It depends on the what you're working on or how you're work, doing your work. So it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to show the different ways of starting. I have two here, but I can, I'm going to show you three. This one is called a waist knot uh, type, and this is where you use the little loop. And then the other is a woven one. So if you look at the back of the waist knot, you can see there is the actual thread where the knot is, and then as I started my cross stitch, I made sure I covered that thread, so that way it is locked inside my work. So let me do one of those. You would start with your knot down lower than where you're actually going to work from. Now you can go down, you can go across. You can do it in any way that works for you, it's fine. Then you come up about an inch, the challenge doing it this way, but we'll, we'll work it out. 
then you go down on an angle and pull it through. Now when you start on the next section, you want to make sure after you put the needle in place, come on, get in there, your thread is caught. Well, see, in this case, I didn't catch my thread, so I want to make sure I catch my thread, so I'll move the thread over. There, so now if you look at the back, the thread is caught inside your first stitch, and you just keep doing that all the way down. Now when you're doing, say if you're working on it with it loose like this one is, I don't, I don't have it in a hoop, this is called the sewing method, where you would go in one side and come up next to it. You just have to be careful you don't pull these too tight because your whole work will get kind of scrunchy. So you got to make sure you keep it very loose. So let's do another sewn one. Then after you get to the bottom or however many stitches you need to do this way, now we're going to go back up. So we're going to go up to the top and over. Enlarge this a little bit, close it, make it a little closer. Then you go over to the side and back. And as you can see, you're forming your X's. Or if you do it back up and down or in and out, you go in the first side of your work and you come back up the second side of your work and you repeat it. We'll do this last one, and I will show you the how to weave in to finish your work. This is a, another way of, this is the way you'd finish. You turn your work over, and normally you don't do it in the same spot you've already done your beginning. You usually have several more over this way, but we're going to pretend like we've done several. You go back through your work on the back side and just catch through some of the threads. And there you go, and that's how you would finish. It, the, the waist knot cast on, uh, the waist knot starting, and the woven end ending. Now the other way to start, let me get this out of the way, is with a loop. I like this one because you don't have to worry about all these waist knots. So once you've got so far on your work done, you can trim off this knot. You just cut this and pull your knot out and now it's gone. So you have a nice finished back. If you don't have, uh, you don't want to do a waist knot or you're working with just two strands and you, ha you can put a loop on the end by folding your thread in half, I'll show you that. So you have one long piece of thread, fold it in half and then thread it whichever way you want to do it. I like to thread this way. It's entirely up to you. This takes a little bit of practice, but it works. So now you've got the loop at the end. So to do this one, you start on the front instead of the back. So you go in the upper cor left corner. This is the way I do mine. You can start with the upper right corner and go down. You can start at the upper right and go this way to start and end going this way. Or you can start going this way and end going this way. The thing to remember is whatever way you start working your project, you want all your stitches to lean the same way because if you start some leaning this way, and the next row you start leaning this way, it's going to show on the top of your work. So make your decision which way you want to start and which way you want to end. All right, so say we're going to start it. You go in your hole. I do the upper left first. Then you come through the bottom hole, which is on the angle. Go through your loop and then go back in that same hole. When you do that, now it's locked and you don't have to worry about your tail. You can either do the up and down, where you go up and back down, and it stays nice and neat on the back. It's that many less tails you have on the back. You will have tails. Oh, can't even get it through the hole now. I do better when I'm setting. Now say you wanna do the sewing method, same thing. You go in and out through the front in and out, in and out. Now if you go back the other direction, same thing, in and out, in and out, 
Now if you do the up and down, you go upper right to lower left, upper right, lower left. Okay, now the another another way to finish it to where you don't have to slide the tail. You can this works great, but if you don't want to do that or you can't do that because you only have one X. There's another way you can finish it off. I'll try to bring it as close as possible. I'll come off to the side and do a single one. It works great either way. So I'm going to do an X all by itself over here. Because sometimes you're only doing one X in the color. And so let me get one, the other half. Now you come up in your corner. I always go down to the bottom right corner first. And you're going to split your stitch inside here. So say if this is where your X was, you want to go into the middle of your work right here. So you're going between all those little threads. So you go in and pull it through. Sometimes you hear a little pop. Now you can do it once, but I'm always nervous once is not quite enough. So I'll go to the top and repeat the process on the top. And that's a way to lock your work. If you have multiple stitches side by side, a lot of times I do it this way. I'll just go in this one, split the stitch underneath the X, then go down to the next one, split the stitch under the X, and that way I kind of spread it out a little bit underneath my work. You can do it either way. Both ways work just fine. And then when you're done, you trim it off. And I always leave a little bit of a tail when I trim it off. So that's another way to start and stop. The other way to start and stop is say you're using the three strands like this one was and because I, I got three strands on this one. You make a tail or make a knot on your tail. You go under where you've already done one. Let me get this one, this out of the way. We're going to use this one. Is that it? Okay. You don't have to do a knot. I don't know why I did the knot. You wouldn't normally do a knot. Let me take the knot off. You just weave underneath a previous roll and then go to your front and start making your stitches. This is loose under here because I didn't finish it off correctly. So I'll say I'm doing the sewing method. And then when you're done, you do the same thing. You can either weave it back under your work. I'll just do one for now. You can go back and weave it under like you did before, or you can do the little hidden knot where you come up in the bottom and split the thread underneath your X. You'll hear a little pop in most cases so you know the thread is nice and tight. And then I do the second one through the top, or you can do it through the side, wherever you have the space to do it. And then that that's the other, that's how you would finish that one off. Sometimes you don't have the option of enough to thread through because you don't want to put a dark thread under a light color because it will show through here if you're using a 13, 11 or 14 count. So say you don't want to put that dark thread underneath this light thread. In that case, I do a little cheaty knot method. I make a little quilter's knot because I don't want it super big. I go in, I'll go down into this one. I'll go through just a couple because the knot will hold it. And then start my work. And then you can do the one stitch or the two stitches or whatever that you need. And then finish it off in whichever way you want to finish it off. Those are different ways to start and stop your work. All of them are fine. All of them are 
usable. It's just you try not to use knots as much as you can. You really don't want to use a knot, but if circumstances require it, no one's going to see it. It's going to be hidden when you have it mounted on a piece of sticky back cardboard and then framed. So that's how the, that part works. All right. Now, and the other thing, if all else fails and you something happens and you can't finish this out the way you want or a stitch becomes loose, a little drop of fabric glue, and once it dries, it'll never be seen. It's on the back of your work. That's when all else fails and nothing else will work. A little drop of glue really comes in handy. I've had to do it a couple of times on my big piece of work. You never can find it. You'll never know where it is. And as long as you don't tell anybody, then no one will know that no one will be the wiser. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to show you, say something happens and you got a hole. Well, unfortunately. Oh, you got two choices, start all over again, or we can try to patch the hole. What I usually do is get a small piece, big enough to cover the hole. I will clean out where the, where the hole is, and you can pretty much tell where the hole is. Make it nice and even. And then you want the patch on the back of your work. And you line it up to where it matches your holes. Then what I do is, I'm just going to use a straight pin for now. What I do is I take the thread that I'm using, just a contrasting thread, and go through these holes underneath. Oh, this one doesn't want to work. Catch it underneath through a couple of the holes. And go all the way around so when you get to that part you can use this hole to this hole this hole to this hole and that way you're doing your X over your little patch I can show you on my project where it happened to me my puppy decided to chew so as you can see I got my little hole right here I went around it and then just to make sure my patch, because I made it a little extra big, is secured also. And I'm not touching this because it's going to slowly continue to unravel. By leaving it alone, it's not going to unravel much more. So when I get to this part of my project, I can do my X's over it. And that way it will not be seen. I don't use any glue because it'll make the fabric a little stiff and it'll be too much glue. So now we're actually going to start working on our project. So here's my little piece that we started. Here is my pattern. Oh, I wanted to show one more thing. I've got one of these magnetic boards. Let me take it out a bit. They have little magnets that come with the board. You would lay your fabric, I mean your uh, pattern, on the board. I have a nice round one I use to hold my needle on, so this way when I'm not using my needle, I have a place to park it. And then I put all my little magnets on each side. The board actually comes with a little ruler one, so that's kind of nice because that will help you do your counts to find out if you're using 11, 14, or 16 count. Then you can either set it on a stand to hold it in an upright position, or you can leave it laying down, whichever is most comfortable for you. In this case, I'm just going to leave it setting down. So we've got our, our threads. We've got our three colors. And those are the first three we show here. So we're going to start. I lost one of my colors. Okay, we're going to start with Y. And Y is pink. So we get our pink one out. And it only has one, and it's in the upper right-hand corner. So we're going to use our little, since this is a two-strand one, we're going to use our loop. So you go in the top. In the bottom. I like doing mine in a hoop. For some reason, it gives me, my finger can go on the back right where I need to put my needle, and it helps me guide my needle through. 
go through my loop, finish it off. and do the other half of the X. Okay, so mine is done. Now, I don't have any more Ys in this area. I can go over here and do this Y, or I can come straight down here and do this Y. So I have a single thread that goes down behind my work. So as I do the next stitches, it would have this kind of a look on the back like we had when we did our um, beginning. So that's what I'll do. I'll go down to this Y. So if I count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six down from my first Y. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the Y I want to put it in, or the spot I want to put it in. And since there's only one, we'll do a complete X. So now when you look at the back, you're going to see that straight line back there. Now this is going to be covered up with the stitches of the next color, which would be the up arrows. You have your option at this point to finish it off, or you can come over to this Y. So I think I'll come over to this one, so it's two over and one up. So I count over two, one, there's one here, two, and up one. So that's right there. So now in this case, I'm going from bottom to top because it's the closest location to the previous X that I did. Because it was one, two over, and one up. That's another reason why they call it count across, that you count all your stitches. Okay, so now I've got this one done. I think I'll stop right now because I want to go to the next color. So I'm going to do my original way I finish off my work. I make a little stitch there. And I make a little stitch there. And then you cut your thread. Okay, so now that one's done. The next one is my green, and it's the double hash mark. So we'll get out the double hash. And it looks like we have one here, none at the bottom, So, but we have two here, and then one over here. So let's do this one, these two, and this one. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. Let me move my out a little bit further. Okay. So we'll start the way we did before because we're using two strands. The only time you use three is usually on the 11 count, which this is, but I'm using only two. So we do our one stitch here. Now in this case, I'm going to go from top to bottom because the next one I want to do is over one. So I'll go to the bottom one. And now we skip one stitch and go over. So we're going to skip this one and start here. So we'll come down to the bottom. You can do the top, but this is the shortest distance between the two. So you use the least amount of thread on the back. So then we go to the top left. And now we go to the bottom left. And then we go to this bottom right. Because we have two we're doing together. So now we'll go back up. And we'll get in the bottom right of this one. Because we want to stay fairly consistent. We want the back to look as neat as possible. So now the next one we're doing is on an angle over, it's down one and over one. So it would be here because this would make it down one and over one. So then we do our X in this one. Oops, lost my thread. Now we're going to finish this one. Now, we've got thread, we can continue going, but we're not going to... Oh, we didn't mark off, so let's mark off the ones we did. We mark off that one, and this one, and this one. And now we just did that one, that one, that one, and that one. Oh, let's go ahead and do this one since it's close by, and it's catty-cornered up from the last Y we did. 
So we can just use the Y to find the next one. We know this is the Y, so we know this is the one we want to do. So we'll go in the top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right. So that we're going to finish it at that point. So the same thing we'll do. We will go inside the bottom left and in between the threads, top right. Now say for some reason you can't get it in here because the stitches above it is kind of hard to make it to see. You can go through the side if you want. Same thing. Either way will work. It's just good if you do two. Then when you turn your work over, you trim off your thread. Now the next one we're going to do is the Y, and the Y is the blue. Since I don't have it here where I did, I will cut off a new one. So you unwind an amount of thread that you think you might need. If you're doing two strands, pull one strand out, just like that, and trim it. And now you have your two strand with your loop. If you need to do three strands, come back, pull out another one. This is the easiest way to do it. And then when you bring it back and pull out a third one. And this part here does not tangle. Then rewrap it up on your card. You'll get to where you know how much thread to cut off depending on how many stitches you're doing. If you're only doing one or two stitches, you may only need to cut a piece off about that long. So when you fold it in half, you have enough to make one stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and get this one threaded on my needle. Okay, at this point we gotta do one, two, three, four. So we start here at the top. Bottom right. Go through the loop and then go back in through your work. Let me enlarge this a little bit. There, might make it a little bit easier. Okay, now we want to take it all the way down. Then after we do this, I'm going to show you doing it horizontally across because in some cases you want to go horizontally because the stitch roll goes that direction. But I'll go ahead and finish this one off first. I, when I use it in a hoop, I go the in and out. If I'm doing it without a hoop, I use the sewing method. It's really a challenge to try to use the hoop and do the sewing method because your fabric is so taut. It takes a little longer to do it this way in a hoop, but it's just the way I enjoy doing it. Now, if you want, instead of doing your little poke through, you can weave it through. But since I'm so close to the hoop, it's going to be hard to kind of weave it underneath. So I'm going to use our little tied off knot or a little knot inside the X. So I go down to the bottom right, split the stitches, and then we do another one. Oh, wrong one. Got to go up one. And then go underneath. And that one is finished. So at this point, you would highlight off these. So now when you put this down for a while, you know where you've left off and what you've done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take, I need a new piece of yarn. Oh, I'll use this blue. Where's the needle? Now, I'm going to pretend what I have to do this time is go across this way. 
important because in some cases that's what you'll have to do. Same thing, you start, you can start at the upper left or the bottom because we're going to go this way. Now if you're going to uh, go this way, you'd start here and go to this one and you just work your way this way. And this, uh, since we're going this direction, we still have to keep this same angle going even though we're going this way versus this way. So if I'm going this way, I would start here. And I would go from the bottom up to the top because I'm going horizontally across this direction. I'm just going to do three because I want to show what would happen if you went the other direction because for some reason you may have to start here and go this way. So let me go back through these three. Okay, so now in this case, I've got to go this direction. So I'll come over one so I have a little bit of space to work with. Now you go from top to bottom this direction. See, when we went the other way, we had to go bottom to top because of the direction we're going. In this case, we go top to bottom because we're going to the right instead of to the left. As you work and do more and more and more, the, this way of stitching will become second nature. You won't even think about it. You'll just do it, and your work will turn out really, really nice. Say, like, you have to come down one. So we'll come down one, and we can do this underneath of it because it's just say one or maybe two we'll go do two say there's two underneath here because you can go between your rolls too you can go across and then if you want do this one then do this one or just incorporate it into your continuous stitching so you don't have to keep starting and stopping your thread or having a long thread going across over to here because you try oh, you try very hard not to have a long thread going this direction. You try to keep it less than an inch whenever possible. I hope this is helpful.